Knowledge is power, and this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education, Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Week at 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, welcome everybody. This is Las Vegas, and we are talking about Nevada Cannabis News. Uh, to my right, I have Kurt Dukoch, Raymond Fletcher, and William Beach Baker. Um, on our local news front today, we have a lot going on in Las Vegas and actually the city, uh, the, the state. Uh, for our local news, tonight we have a meeting in Henderson. Our city council meeting in Henderson is going to begin at about 7 p.m. And they're talking about the zoning regulations that were revised on June 26, 2014. The City Council, Henderson City Council, is at 240 South Water Street at Basic and Water Street. Um, they're just talking about medical marijuana establishments, zoning restrictions, different types of where zoning where buildings can be located, new rules. What, what else would we have on Henderson? Well, well, it seems, um, Jen, that's all that we have, really. You know, it looks like they've already decided to go forward with it. So now it looks like they're just establishing the rules and regs of how they're going to actually do the process. Where they're going to put the buildings and how far away from schools and parks and all the stuff that they've gone through with all the other municipalities already. Yeah, we've seen this done in uh, Clark County. They just finished theirs up. Las Vegas is getting ready to start theirs. I don't know how far north las vegas is we're going to talk about that in a few minutes sure it seems like that's the direction it's going right now well right now we've got on uh, minimum separation that there is no separation from residents for a dispensary so that they can they can have um a dispensary that is in a zoned commercial commercial but with like over the wall there could be a house uh, you know somebody's house cultivation um on the, on other news tomorrow tomorrow we have north las vegas so what's going on in north las vegas north las vegas it uh, looks like uh it's going to be agenda item what is that 20 28 i think 28 the, yeah, they're it's uh, towards the end of the day taking public comment zoning advertising their plan basically uh just what las vegas just voted on and finished up a couple weeks ago um part of north las vegas's plan is that you have to have like a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar bond to protect their director of um i think it's director of planning planning and zoning commission so that so that basically if if the planning the director of planning says it's okay to put dispensaries in and then the federal government comes in and does something that that they're that they're protected is that what i'm you're absolutely right and the city had the same thing about that and then it came the argument of the amount of the bond and one of the people came up and spoke during a public comment and said, hey, I can't find anybody to bond for this amount. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you had people coming up there, then you had only one person come up and say, hey, we'll bond for that amount. I think it was Cornerstone or Capstone was the name. Of I don't the, even remember what, what that was, but that's an awful high amount of money, you know, number one. And number two, does the city of North Las Vegas do this for other pharmacies or perhaps liquor stores or anything? If not, why are they singling out medical, medical cannabis users? Well, you know, remember there was a big there was a big hullabaloo about oh, what if the feds come in? What what kind of protections do we have if the feds come in and bust us? And then they were like, oh, you need to protect us. The city needs to protect us. Um, uh, there was a lot of, 
I think the city's attorney Brad Jervik, he was he was running scared for a while there, saying I don't want to have anything to do with this. Yeah, he even refused to show up for the meetings because he was afraid that they'd come and get him. Yes, but at the same time, I've got to give it to Brad. He argued in front of the state supreme court to allow lawyers to, you know, represent their clients, the municipalities, Mm -hmm. you know, on this issue without being punished. So, you know, on one hand, he was protecting himself, yet on the other hand, he worked for us as a community. So I kind of... That's true. That that, that kind of shines a better light on on Mr. Jervik because, you know, I mean, if if he's scared about something happening, at least he went out and was proactive and solved the problem instead of just like being chicken little. The sky is falling and I'm not doing anything about it either. You know, and, and you're absolutely right. And, you know, this is a time for leaders to step up. You know, and at that point, Brad saw that, you know, a our community is going to be doing this. You know, somebody needs to represent these municipalities. You know, I'm the city attorney. You know, I'm going to do my job and best represent the city and the residents. That's true. That's true. Um, North Las Vegas, their application uh, time is is open or is it open on July 8th? North Las Vegas? Yeah. I don't have an application period for that set up yet. The, I said they I think they said from now until August fifth, but they didn't and the, they didn't um issue an application. Well that's interesting that you have an application period open and no Official application? Exactly. That's I kinda thought that was a little bit odd, so I'm not really sure I'm not really sure what's going on. Um with that and then we have what july 8th is another date well what i was going to say speaking of applications the city of las vegas has extended their application period Mm -hmm. it'll be from july 8th through july 23rd the process starts on the first floor with the planning department you have to grab one of the cumatic tickets and your number will be called um and on the last day um which would be, what was that, uh, the 28th, was it? 23rd. 23rd. On Wednesday, July 23rd, if you do not have a ticket by 3 p.m., you will not be seen. Your application will not be processed. And don't forget, you have got to have that sheet oh, from yeah. that special meeting that they had. Yes, you had, to, you had to attend the workshop and get that signed off. So. If you don't have that special sheet, I have one. <laughs> and they aren't taking Xerox copy. Remember that because it's a uh, it's an official yeah, sh- it's be signed hand signed. Sheet. Yes, it's official signed with the red stamp and everything. Yep. Uh, so they're they're accepting applic- land use applications and licensing applications from seven thirty a.m. on Tuesday, July eighth, and their ten day cycle will close at three p.m. on Thursday, July seventeenth. Applications must be physically received in the department's offices at 333 North Rancho Drive, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89106 between 3 p.m. or by 3 p.m. on July 17th. Um, so you can't you can't submit them beforehand. Um, and if you don't, if you didn't go to the pre-application workshop, then it's just too bad. But it says they will begin taping, taking app appointments for pre-application workshops the the week of June 8th. So that's already passed. And those sheets, they have to be specially signed, just like Raymond said, um, or or you don't get, uh, or they, they don't get submitted with your application. Yeah, and if you need help with uh, obtaining one of those sheets, you can contact us uh, at our website, wecan702.org, at the Contact Us, and just let us know, uh, you know, uh, what you're planning on doing and that you need the help, and we'll do what we can to help you with that. I sure. hate to interject, Jen. Okay. You contradicted me, and I'm going to contradict you. Uh-oh. You said by uh, July 17th. No, that's July 23rd. Remember, July, it, oh, it was they extended. extended. It. Oh, that's yeah. what I just said. Well, they extended it. They, they okay. added a second three-day weekend in there, so it's still 10 working days, but now it goes till the 23rd because of the fact they added that extra weekend in there. Oopsie. Thank you, Raymond, for, for correcting me there. My pleasure. <laughs> All right. Um, We'd also like to, to talk about... July 29th? Uh, no, actually, um, Marla McDade-Williams yes. stepping down. 
Um, Marla McDade Williams uh, has been the head of um, the sub, uh, Committee for Medical Marijuana, and she's decided to step down, and her last day is on Thursday, I believe? On Thursday, correct. She's the Deputy Administrator for the Division of Public and Behavioral Health. And so she's. So we'd like to thank her for her work on uh, on on this subject, and um, wish her luck in her future endeavors. Really. Yeah, she did a wonderful job. She uh, she stepped up and she just grabbed the reins of this and you know took it to where it needed to be. And now she feels she's done enough and she's going to step back and pursue other things. So good luck. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, the next thing that we need to talk about is the... How about it, the local news of your uh, meetings? July oh. 9th. That's July 9th. July 9th. The, uh, the, the, the Senate Subcommittee on... Uh, the Justice Subcommittee on Medical Use of Marijuana, which is the uh, committee that was put together to oversee the implementation of this program and to make the changes that are needed uh, to it in the next legislative term. Uh, you'll be holding a meeting on Wednesday, July 9th at the Grant Sawyer Office Building, and uh, Jennifer is uh, sitting on that committee, so she is our patient representative. Yes, I am the patient representative for the state of Nevada. Um, our, our meeting on Wednesday, Jan- July 9th at 9 a.m. It is going to have several different items on the agenda, and you can look these items up, or you can look for look for an agenda at www.leg.com state.nv.us dot. That's a lot of dots. Or you can look on our Facebook website, our Facebook. We have the links on Facebook. I also have them up on Meetup. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to go on uh, meetup.com forward slash weekend 702, it's in our discussion page. Um, The agenda is going to cover several different aspects of the medical marijuana program on the state level, including implementation implementation of the state bill, discussion on whether to limit the number of cultivation facilities, discussion of confidentiality of applicants ranking to operate a medical marijuana establishment, uh, the process and issuance of medical marijuana registry cards, the discussion of confidentiality on the number of medical marijuana registry identification card holders. I don't, sorry to interject, I don't think that one should be confidential. You know, how many card holders does the state of Nevada have? Does each county have? That's just me. But I'm sorry. I, I don't I don't think so either. I think that, that they, sh- they do have it on, up on the Department of Behavioral Health currently. You can look at, at those numbers, the stats for Nevada, on the number of medical marijuana patients that are in Nevada and their, and their mean ages, you know, are between this and this age. And you'll find that like 80% of the people are over 35. And the new numbers should be out next Monday. This coming Monday, rather. Oh. Beginning of the new month. It seems like the first Monday of the month the new numbers are always posted. That's great. So what what were, what were the last numbers on Let's the numbers? See, in, Cur- May, 4, in May, we had 5,859 patients active in the, in the, at the, as of June 2nd. Is that the state or county? That's, That's the state. state. Okay. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the county's like uh, 4,196. 4,196. So, uh, so, but if you're looking at this, since, since the, uh, April 1st, uh, we've almost gained 1,500 patients since uh, the new laws have gone into effect. So they've renewed all those 4,000 plus patients that we had, plus they've added another 1,500, and we still don't have the dispensaries open yet. So, and we expect those numbers to skyrocket as soon as the medication is available and, and accessible for people in the dispensary. So you're absolutely right. And even though with the law going effect, with uh, was it one million, two million people that live in the valley in Clark County area, 1,500 isn't much. It's it's like less than a tenth of a percent. Yeah, well, we're still hearing it from patients all that contact us all the time who are looking, you know, looking for relief, and they want to get their card. But the the next question out of their mouth is, how do I obtain my medication? No, I'm talking about the negative Nellies that were like, as soon as you get this in place, the floodgates of applicants are going to open, mm-hmm. and that just hasn't happened, you know. And you know, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but still, we we just need to get the patients their medication. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I, I tend to agree with you, Raymond, on on one point, that it has not opened up. The, the floodgates haven't opened up with all of these patients because of what Kurt said. You know how many patients ask me, you, uh, uh, where, where do I get it? If I get this card, what's my advantage 
to getting this card if I can't get it anywhere? Or I'm currently getting it from my dealer on the street, so why should I get this card and then just still get it from this person on the street? You know, so I think that once the dispensaries are in place, they're they it the trickle is going to is is going to increase to like a flood. I well, believe once law enforcement and whomever our new sheriff gets into place, hopefully they get the training that they need. Once the law enforcement gets trained, they need they can shut down these illegal dispensaries. You know, use the resources where they need to use them at, and then you know focus on educating the community. Well, you know, just an interesting point when you said that um, these people are going to shut down the the, the dispensaries. Um, Massachusetts is cracking down on medical marijuana caregivers. I'd, I'd like to talk about this more after the break because it kind of blends Las Vegas. Um, it kind of blends Las Vegas news in with, you know, with the United States news that there are a lot of illegal dispensaries and delivery services here in Las Vegas that are operating and as you guys saw at the city council meeting they they all came out and said hey you know don't don't stop us from doing this illegal stuff once these legal dispensaries get up and running and in place i think that there's going to be a serious problem um well not problem i mean they're, they're just going to get raided all these illegal delivery services and illegal dispensaries are going to get raided and all these people that have been jumping around and acting like oh look they haven't done nothing to us yet and you know we're gangster and all this other stuff are going to go down and and they're then they're going to be real sad really sad that they didn't do it the legal way or didn't just shut down and hopefully um as they have the black book for gaming these people get in a black book for cannabis if you want to run an operation illegal you do not have the right to work in our industry all right so we're going to be going to a short break and in a moment we're going to come back to our 420 uh, moment thank you Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation toll free 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Locally owned and operated TSI Total Safety Incorporated has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000. That's 702-967-0000 or visit us at TSIVegas.com. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada Medical Marijuana card today. Welcome back to the Cannabis News Hour. It's time for our 420 moment. And I am so honored to present today's person... He is a man that's a personal hero to me and a person that got me into politics. Former President William Jefferson Clinton. I never inhaled. I never did. (laughs) This past Sunday on Meet the Press, he expressed his belief that states should experiment with allowing adults to use marijuana recreationally. I think we should leave it up to the states, the former president said. If the state wants to try it, they can, and they'll be able to see what happens. Mm. I was going to say, and we all know that Bill is all about personal adult uh, experimentation. 
<laughs> yes, and th- hopefully uh, um, he'll have a stash of cigars to share with all his friends who smoke. <laughs> um, the former president went on to say, this really is a time when there should be laboratories of democracy because nobody really knows where this is going. And coincidentally, this is a similar stance that uh, former Secretary of State Clinton, Hillary Clinton, took, uh, who recently changed her position. Mm-hmm. Hillary knows which way the wind is blowing, and she's getting Bill to sign on. You're right, but you got to look. You know, that was during the 90s, and here we are, and it's past 2010. You know, this is a stark contrast to how uh, President Clinton treated the issue during his presidency. During his administration, he wanted to punish doctors for even discussing the use of medical marijuana as an alternative treatment with patients. You know, you get much like things have changed, you know, in, in a generation. So as times pass, you know, people's opinions pass. So former President Clinton, we salute you. 420 moment. <laughs> Smoke them if you got them. Smoke them if you got them. Don't inhale. <laughs> I didn't inhale. <laughs> All right. Um, so Going back, you started talking about the caregivers and everything else. That was a story I know you wanted to get into. It, you know, it's the truth. It, the, the caregivers in Massachusetts, I think Beach took the paper away from me. There are caregivers in Massachusetts that have been actually warned by the state. They were warned by the state, hey, um, we're going to do this. We're going to take... We're going to arrest you if you have if you're a caregiver for more than one person. More than one patient. More than one patient. Kind of like the same thing that we have here currently in the state of Nevada. If you're a caregiver legally, you can you only, can't be a patient. You a can't care- be a patient, and you can only be a caregiver for one patient. You can't you can't take care you can't have a garden to even take care of three or four people. You know what I mean? Uh, they they restrict you down to taking care of one person only. And I think that's kind of a shame because if you're growing for yourself, it's not that hard to grow for someone else also. You know, um, you, if you're growing for yourself and you have your 12 plants going, that's what we have here in Nevada, you, your 12 plants going, it would be easier just to throw in some more plants and then give your excess as a caregiver so that you truly can be a caregiver because in the state of Nevada they say that you either have to grow for yourself well until these dispensaries open or you have to get somebody to grow for you for free is that a capitalistic society or or not really not really I mean you want to make sure somebody is compensated for their time you know, the resources they use, the nutrients, these yeah, hours they, put they in. Can, they can be re- reimbursed for the resources, but they can't get anything for their time and their, their efforts that they put in. And they the can't game. be a patient either, so they can't smoke their product? So how are they supposed to know if it's good? I don't know. You know, but then you also have to look out for those shady people that that claim to be good and righteous and want to help you and be your caregiver and grow your 12 plants and you only get an eighth. That's that, and you know, and that's true. I've been I've been telling people they need to be their own best advocate for years. Um, what's going on in Massachusetts is that health officials are cracking down on the booming cottage industry of self-described caregivers. So much like what you're saying, uh, Raymond, these people are self-described caregivers. And they say the caregivers, many who advertise on the Internet, um, are the only legal avenue for people to buy medical marijuana until storefront dispensaries start to open. And that 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 statement is, is crazy because it's not the legal avenue. It's not. It's not legal. And they say this is the only, they should say basically this is the only avenue. Um, in November at the earliest, their Massachusetts is going to open up dispensaries. And a, a lot of those, a lot of those people who are illegal caregivers are going to be arrested. Yeah, there's somebody in, in the, that state who claims he's helping over a thousand patients right now. And uh, he's one of the people that they're, they sent letters to him telling him that if he has more than one patient, he'll be arrested. And then they, uh, they also sent advisory letters to all of his patients saying that they need to cease and desist getting medication from this, this, this gentleman. How did they get it, this his patient list, I wonder? That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, well, when you fill out your application here in Nevada... I know it asks if you have a caregiver. 
you have to fill out information and where you plan on growing it. Mm-hmm. Is it at your location or is it at the Carol Givers location? So you actually have to put that type of information on your application here. Well, he's th- this guy, it says that he is contemplating uh, or he's asking patients to join a lawsuit with him. Um, basically, he's challenging the state law. Um, and the state claimed that he's breaking the law. He's saying that one patient per caregiver regulation is illegal, which is kind of just a little bit crazy, too, because the law is already down in, in place. Um, well, it might not be but illegal, but his, his claim or that, that it's doing great harm actually may be truth, because we've, we've been going back and forth on this. Right now, not, it's unconstitutional, but right now... Right now, there are people in Nevada, they're being served by these illegal delivery services, these illegal dispensaries, and everything else. So they are serving a purpose for the patients and access for patients. Those are the dispensaries, though. Those are, I'm sorry, those are the illegal delivery services. Those are not the caregivers. But that's what this guy is claiming, because how can he be a caregiver for a thousand people? He can't. He can't. There is you, there's no, no way, way you can give your time to a thousand people and adequately be a caregiver. If you're going to do a caregiver and, and five people a month on your client list, what, what, what are you going to do? Only be with uh, each client like one day a week? You know, when you, when people have needs, you know, their needs don't end at the end of the day. You know, if they're truly providing caregiving services. Yeah, caregivers are more than just, here's your medication, have a nice have a nice day, call me when you need more, you know. That's a drug dealer. What you just described is a drug dealer. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, in, in describing this guy in Massachusetts, he's, he's saying that he's serving a 1,000 clients, and, and in reality, what he's, he's a, big drug deal, a big drug dealer. That's all. Yep. What kind of training and certification has he had as a caregiver? And are these states going to hold up these individuals that claim that they're caregivers? Are they going to make them go through any sort of formal training to get certification? Um, this, well, this guy, he said he's a lawyer who's been certified by a doctor to take care of medical marijuana patients for chronic pain and ba- back chronic back pain and anxiety he's a lawyer that's been certified by a doctor a doctor's basically saying the guy's like okay hey doc i i got a a a way to get some cannabis why don't you send your patients my way so he's acting as a pharmacist not a caregiver and if that is a fact and if that is illegal in the state of massachusetts then yes, he should certainly be penalized, and those patients should have to find an alternative way to get their medication. But if he is indeed an actual caregiver, as he is claiming, he needs to reduce his client load. It seems to me like he just is a lot of, uh, it's a lot like what is going on here, and he's like one of the delivery services out here, and he's just grasping at straws now that the fact that the the legal businesses are going to start opening up they're they're putting into the they're putting in right now the thing is telling them hey you need to stop what you're doing or we're gonna come and close you down at and least they did that for him i've got to say that yeah they fired nevada, the warning shot they fired the warning shot in nevada they when they came in in 2010 and just started busting uh dispensaries that were illegal dispensaries they really didn't give a lot of warning to to people they just set feds in to do illegal buys and then they just kind of busted everybody in 2010 and, and now, the, buy, the buys might not even have been illegal because some of these places they they were busted for selling to an undercover officer who had a medical marijuana card so. but in selling in general that's illegal yeah yeah but under state law was it was that yeah they didn't have the outline for dispensaries at that point but in 2010 that was so illegal yeah <laughs> They had, uh, like, storefront dispensaries open, Raymond. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you, you kind of just moved in here in here recently, but they had, like, storefront dispensaries <laughs> open, everything up on weed maps, thing being crazy. And when they all started getting busted and coming, and coming to my patient meetings and going, what do we do? What do we do? I said, you mean you set up an illegal business and you 
didn't talk to a lawyer first. You don't even have a lawyer on staff. So they these crazy. Were, these were actually legal businesses. They were illegal businesses. Well, then more power to them getting <laughs> shut down. Hey, look, I'm all for. I am looking forward to these shysty, shady delivery services being shut down, because when something goes wrong, you, you have no way for recourse. Yeah, so what happens? You buy some stuff that's like loaded with pesticides and you get sick from these people. What do you do? Or they advertise, you know, hey, you, you order like an a, a ounce of Kush or whatever and they bring you an ounce of crust. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, what they're selling is not tested. It's it's not proven. It's, it's, it's basically the same stuff that you get on the street. And that that is in all reality recreational use because there's a huge difference and they might have some medical grade stuff but it's not tested you don't know what you're buying when you buy it you know you know that you don't know the thc levels you don't know the cbd levels you don't know if there's pesticides or bugs or mold or mildew uh, and that's one of the real reasons that we need these dispensaries open with tested and tried and true medication so that the patients know exactly what they're getting and they can actually start to treat their symptoms with the correct medication, not just something they get off of the street or something they get from a delivery service, which is who knows what. And by the way, if you want to, if you know um, the type of medication that you're growing, if you know the plants, you know, that you're growing, you can look on like Leafly or there are a few more um, websites that will tell you what the these different strains are good for so like if you have some og bubba kush and you can look up what that strain is specifically known for and and good for so i mean you still have a way of kind of checking your meds against something um yeah you can check them yourself but you don't know the strength the of, of it you can grow two plants side by side and they'll they'll test different uh, so you really, you know, you can get an average of what that plant will be off of Leafly, you know, what the average THC on it would be. But, you know, you don't know. You just know if it was a banner crop or an average crop. You don't know if it was a name brand crop or <laughs> generic crop. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of the times, like uh, a lot of the growers out here, the home growers, they, they know where their genetics came from. But you have to, And that's one thing I could say that I'm really enjoying about Las Vegas is getting in conversation with other patients and they're talking about their meds and the genetics and where it came from and those are really you know it's like the history of the cannabis so for poli sci and history guy like myself you know that that's i enjoy those conversations I, I really do, too. And if, you know, if this type of stuff is really your bag and you um, have a bachelor's degree or, or, or something like that, Carson City has sent out a lot of job listings. There are a lot of medical marijuana jobs, and I think there are like five different listings for Carson City. Um, you can find this link on Weekend 702 on our Facebook, and it says basically jobs in Nevada, and, and you can go on that link and apply for those jobs here in Nevada. And they are obtainable. I was just talking with a friend here in Las Vegas, and as I was talking to him today, he got a text from his friend who lives up in Reno, and uh, she was hired for one of the positions up in Reno as an inspector. So, Whoa. so they are obtainable wow. as long as you have some experience and you put in the application. So don't be don't be afraid, but you do have to have some experience. It lists what you need up there. So, okay, um, well. Kind of close to home, Utah. Utah Hospital is going to use cannabis extract to treat kids with epilepsy. There are 25 spots uh, available for this drug trial. And they are going to um, prescribe a pharmaceutical grade cannabis to children and teens who have severe epilepsy. And, and the drug trial, uh, like I said, only has 25 spots available. And it's not known whether the when the study is going to uh, start. Schedule 1 drugs are considered most dangerous and potentially addictive, and this category includes heroin, LSD, and marijuana. That's a big joke. But that's the reason that's been inhibited from um, doing drug t trials and research on the cannabis uh, drug itself. Yeah, this is a very interesting story because it's... As we know, Utah just passed their CBD-only legislation to allow CBD-only medication into the state of the U Utah. And this is actually 
being done by a hospital is going to use the cannibal extract. It's not. It's not the par- the parents coming and saying, "Hey, I want this," and the parents treating them. It's actually the hospital be using that. So this drug is called Epidiolux. It's a liquid purified form of cannabidiol or CBD. That's the non-psychoactive chemical that's in marijuana. Um, Epidiolex uh, is manufactured by the dr- uh, British drug maker GW Pharmaceuticals. Uh, we, we've long had talks about CBD rich being really good for for healing and for anti-seizure properties but people need to know that THC and CBD work synergistically and you don't have to have the psychoactive effects of the THC um, in the cannabis if you are smoking or you apply heat to marijuana then the THC turns into or THCA turns into THC and that's the psychoactive property but it's only when heat is applied if you do a cold press or if you do a or if you um do a cold tincture in the freezer none of that thc is active but the cbd is active so that the so that the tincture that you give only has the cbd effect yeah naturally the plant uh in in its in its raw form has a very low amount of THC, like usually less than 1%, but it usually runs anywhere between 14 to 24% of THCA, which is the THC with the amino acid molecule on the end. You have to go through a process called decarboxylation, which is basically heating the plant matter at, at any stage of, of, of the processing. And the decarboxylation actually knocks off that alpha molecule, and then you get... you. Acid. Yeah, the amino acid molecule, and you end up with th more THC and less THCA in the plant. And that happens like when you smoke it and burn it, or if you cook it into food and you heat it in the butters or the oils. But there are there are processes where you can strip the cannabinoids off of the plant matter, matter and and y- without heat. And if you use that medication, you you don't get high. You don't have the psychoactive effect. Yet you have all of the healing effects of the CBDs and the THC. Well, if you're a person that has those skills and abilities to do what Kurt just described, you're going to be a person in huge need here in the Valley. That's true. That is true. We're going to have a job fair in August, a huge job fair in August, and um, and we're going to announce the dates uh, closer closer to that job fair. But it, I expect it to be pretty big, and we're going to talk about jobs here in uh, the Valley and surrounding areas. I know that um, in Las Vegas and Clark County, and I'm and I'm not sure about North Las Vegas or Henderson, but what, what there'll be what uh, forty dispensaries total in Clark County, is that right? Yeah, forty in Clark County. So you have forty in Clark County. We already have over ninety growth and production facilities that are approved. So you know there are going to be a lot of jobs. That are coming up pretty soon. Yeah, lots of them. And, you know, not only in the medical field, but a lot in the ancillary businesses that support this. That's true. That's true. Um, We have uh, next in the news, Iowa. Uh, The Iowa's new state medical marijuana law takes effect today. Um. Iowa's new medical marijuana law takes effect today, a month after Governor Terry Barnstead, uh, like many Republican lawmakers, had previously steadfast oppo- uh, were opponents of the medical marijuana legal uh, legislation. They signed a bill allowing parents to purchase a cannabis oil extract to lessen the effects of their children's seizures. So once again, it's the CBD, uh, the CBD oils that have been approved. It's really not. It's really not the THC, um, and this is also just for, and this is just for children. Recommended cannabis oil. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, uh, if you if you would have told me five years ago that there were going to be states turning medical for for children and seizures, I would have laughed at you and said there's absolutely no way that the states are going to get on board with that. But just through the evidence and what we've seen and how how much it's helped these these kids, I mean, it's. Uh, I see by by the end of next year, 
a majority of the states are going to be on that program. Too bad New Jersey won't. Chris Christie is steadfast, absolutely against it. And they have had parents that asked them at news conferences, how are you going to let my child suffer? That man has has no soul. I don't know how he can be a human being. Well, you can only you can only you can only do that for so long until the until the the sheep will open up their eyes and vote you out. So that's true. That's true. He you know he's he's notorious for doing other things too, isn't Chris Christie? Yeah, like shutting down a bridge or some some. Weirdness. Yeah, because the uh, mayor of that city didn't support him in an election. Yeah. <laughs> so, a little bit of abuse of power there. He's kind of petty. <laughs> so. So we're going to have um, more national and local news after the break, and we'll see you on Nevada Cannabis News soon. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com you're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Welcome back, everybody. This is Jennifer Solis, and this is the Nevada Cannabis News on KLAV 1230 AM. Please give us a call at 702-731-1230 if you'd like to comment or have any suggestions for us, or 866-820-5528. Toll free. Um, next, we're coming back to LA's uh, farmers market. Kurt, what do you got on that? Yeah, this weekend in LA, they're having a cannabis centric farmers market to debut. Woohoo! Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. This came from the Los Angeles Times, and uh, the the ever popular farmers market scene in LA could uh, soon see the introduction of a whole new type of green. That's what they said. Uh, they targeted to a very specific consumer. This is being billed as LA's first cannabis centric farmers market, and it's making its debut at Boyle Heights over Fourth of July weekend. The motivation for organized organizers is, uh, is similar to what made farmers markets. Uh, ambiguous across Los Angeles, direct access to produce, or in this case, pot producers. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So basically, you can stroll along and and get the and get all the medication from from different. Uh, uh, cultivators, or Dip- is it different dispensaries? At the market, card-carrying medical marijuana patients will be able to smell, touch, and yes, purchase fresh organic buds directly from growers who will be coming in from around the state. Marijuana treats, oils, concentrated cannabis, and glass pipes may also be on the menu. I want to go. Okay, <laughs> yeah, road I think, trip. I think I think it's time for a road trip and get my uh, California card here. Road trip, here we come. <laughs> yes, I can't wait until we have something like that here in the state of Nevada. I mean, it's only right around the corner. Let's do it. Well, <laughs> after we go to your farmers market, let's head on up to Washington, where uh, recreation dispensaries will start sales on July eighth. Woohoo! 
So that's a, that's the next field next trip week. is uh, July 8th to Washington, Washington State. We need to get a weekend bus so we can get everybody around to all these fun functions. All right, everybody, get on the bus. <laughs> uh, Washington's Liquor Control Board will hand out Washington State first, I like this, 20-ish. 20-ish? 20-ish. Retail marijuana licenses on July 7th, giving those business owners a l- only 24 hours to begin sales. Yes, you're looking at me funny. I am. The dispensaries will start on July 8th. The Liquor Control Board will hand out their first retail licenses on July 7th. I'm not misreading this. Gee, many Christmas. So how are these people going to open up? Oh, they're opening up for recreational. So they've already had they've already had uh, medical use there. In Washington State. And yeah. now they're going to open up with recreational. So basically, once they once everybody has their licenses approved, it's already people that are on the ground running. Yeah, they probably already have their growth and set up right now. Yeah, well, they're actually talking about a shortage, just like they had in Denver when they rolled out the uh, program in January. It's the same thing. The They didn't have the production ready to go, and they're giving it to that. And uh, the Liquor Control, Control Board has been warning about shortages when the first stores open up here. Um it looks like, though, that they are going to require testing still at the at the uh, recreational things, which is a little different than it is in, in Colorado. In Colorado, recreational, it doesn't have to be tested or, or anything. You just pretty much get the bottom of the bottom of the barrel there. Although, you know, this time when I went to Colorado, I, I didn't. I, I, I well, I was with a patient and um, and I got really good meds this time. Um, there's only one lab in Washington State that's doing all this testing? Yeah, one lab. Oh, and right my now, goodness. Right now they can handle about 100 samples a day, but they're saying if they get 300 samples thrown at them, they're worried <laughs> that they're not going to be able to handle it. And so. not only that, after they receive their licenses, these businesses must move their product into a store tracing program. So these, these owners are going to have a, a, a lot of work. <laughs> Before uh, in twenty four hours, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are, man. Yeah, well, the, lo- go ahead. Because of the ramp up of uh, of the extra medication that they're trying to get ready, the the owner of the lab says that he expects twenty to thirty percent of the samples turned in to fail because of high mold counts. So, and uh, they won't be able to sell those those samples, but they they can use it to make cannabis oil, even with the mold. Well, you know, they're talking about the shortage. Uh, there's going to be a purchase limit of an ounce, which is significantly higher than Colorado's, where the limit is one quarter of an ounce per recreational consumer. So even with their shortages that they're projecting, you're getting three quarters more than you would get in Colorado. Yeah, so um, I guess my next trip is going to be up to Washington. <laughs> I'm going to go on a fact-finding mission, you guys. <laughs> yes, we're going to take that weekend bus. Okay. <laughs> you might be able to purchase an ounce, but it, I, I kind of see most of your recreational users usually don't buy an ounce at a time. It's the people that are that are using it medically every day that tend to buy, buy the A ounce. zip. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. M- medical users tend to be the ones that try to get ounces or more. It's your for a lack of a better word, stoners that they're out there getting getting themselves a nickel bag, a twenty sack, an something. eighth or a quarter. Exactly. You know, if, if usually those kind of people, if they're buying an ounce, they're buying it so that they can sell it to their friends. Right. You know, but thankfully these stores in uh Washington You know what? Beach Beach has <laughs> Beach disagrees with this last comment. Beach says that and and this is true, and I know this to be true. People over about thirty five or forty, they buy an ounce because they can they can afford it. But the price break on an ounce versus a dub, a dub, a dub, you know, is is a lot. If you know, if you're going back and and buying an eighth or a quarter, you know, every couple of days, then it's just better off buying a zip. You know, you're you're making me chuckle over here because I'm thinking about you know what I've heard from um, some of the uh, more advanced generations is a uh, uh, three finger lids. So you're over here <laughs> talking zip. I'm, yeah, three I've, fingers. I've, I've heard that's three. about a quarter to a half. 
<laughs> it depends. We're we're using old old drug terms, I guess. Oh, Beach says he wants to take a senior tour of, of Colorado and Washington on the weekend bus. Well, I, I think we first need to get to L.A. this weekend. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> All right. Um, so more in our news, um, our Wounded Warrior news, veterans programs, veterans programs and, yeah, helping, yeah. Uh, and helping patients with PTSD. Yeah, there was a story this week on CBS News that aired on June 25th, and uh, they're, uh, they're coming up. Uh okay. <laughs> That's informative. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. I kind of right. lost my it place basically, there. It basically <laughs> said that um, uh, it, CBS's news is Barry Peterson um, interviewed this guy named Matt Call, and he did two tours of a- uh, Afghanistan, and he was racked with not only physical injuries, but PTSD. He really saw the whole situation as being hopeless, uh, our veteran did. And he's, he tried to, 15 different medications, um, Mr. Call said. He tried t- 15 different medications before he tried um, med- marijuana. He said suddenly his extremely overactive, hypervigilant mind started to calm down. And um, then he was determined to move to a state that allows medical marijuana so that he can get his life back on track. He even moved to Colorado and now works with a group called Grow for Vets. Um, He and other volunteers recently spent a day putting together bags of marijuana products that are going to be given away at holidays like Memorial Day. Uh, Marijuana is meant to treat war wounds, both mental and the physical kind that doctors often treat with drugs like Oxycontin. Uh, I talked to to some of my students actually in class today because uh, when people get back from war, even though they're, they're their bodies may not be wounded their minds have seen traumatic different traumatic things and our vets eat when they come back if you if you don't treat their ptsd then they tend to get um sidetracked with other drugs um like speed meth um they also they also get sidetracked with alcohol, alcohol mm. big time, big time, big time, big time, and alcohol. Uh, yeah, a lot of alcohol abuse from our veterans because they're just trying to deal with drown all out that. the voices that yeah, they hear. Trying to deal with all what the I've heard from veterans, you know, and and I'm going to be uh, working with veterans here shortly uh, that are newly disabled from serving, you know, overseas, and you know anything that I can do to help anybody that has certainly, you know, fought for my rights and my freedoms, I'm I'm, I'm honored to do. For sure, we can also. Um, we can also has a division. Um, it, it's a for-profit division called Pro Caregivers um, that I'm working with, and we work with vets. Uh, we work with veterans also. Um, we have, and, and so we. And all that information is up on the Facebook page and the website. I think it is up on our. It's on our in our meetup group. Okay, fantastic. I'll make sure to put a link on our, our Facebook. Uh, um, we have some things that are coming up, first and foremost. This Friday is the 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. Woohoo! Uh, there is no first Friday. That's right. Remember, no. no it has been first canceled Friday. this month, so we will not be out in front of the artifice. You know, you're welcome to go down there. There's still a couple little things going on, but first Friday will not be happening this month. Then also coming up on the 9th, we have the meeting that Jen told us about, and that's located... It's located at 555 East Washington Avenue, room 4401, and that's Las Vegas, Nevada. That's Wednesday, the- July 9th at 9 a.m., and that's the Advisory Commission on the Administration of Justice Subcommittee on the Medical Use of Marijuana. That's a mouthful. Um, with Medical those Marijuana Oversight Board. We'll see you guys next week. So see you next week. Have a happy 4th of July. Have a safe and sane holiday, you guys. Thank Talk you. To you soon.